So you guys really liked the last video where we gave the original Yu-Gi-Oh! anime characters new decks to use in the modern game. Well, by popular request, I've decided to do the same thing, but this time for Yu-Gi-Oh! GA. And the same rules apply. We're not just going to settle for this character's deck got legacy support, so that's what they play today. Because while that's probably true, it's kind of boring. I want to give each character a new deck that fits their personality and play style. We're also going to try to avoid giving decks used by other anime characters, at least where we can. So, without further ado, Let's get started. Jain Yuki is the first character, and he was a surprisingly tough one. His signature hero deck has gotten loads of cards over the years, but Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't really seem to have another deck that captures that same energy. We know Jaden himself is a dueling fiend, and he honestly seems like he'd love playing pretty much any deck as long as it feels cool and fun, but those are kind of vague concepts. One idea that came to mind was Ancient Warriors. It's a colorful cast of monsters with effects that summon their allies and their rivals to the field, powering them up and pulling off combo abilities in the process. Plus, I guess they could be considered the heroes of the Three Kingdoms period of China that they're based on. Not a bad start. The second idea is Element Savers. They literally have the same elemental design component, being able to change their attributes in the graveyard, and they've got a bunch of different potential boss monsters in the form of the Elemental Lord. And the Dark Horse pick was Liebermancers, a deck that's actually about comics and other books coming to life, which feels a little bit like the Elemental Heroes too. In the end, I decided to go with Ancient Warriors, but this is one that's definitely wide open to interpretation, so I look forward to hearing what you guys come up with in the comments. Next up is Cyrus Truesdale. His signature anime deck is the Vehicroids, but what would he play in today's Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, two different machine decks come to mind, at least for me. The first one is Appliancers. They're a kind of obscure pick, but the design of household appliances like a vacuum cleaner or a washing machine actually still manages to feel remarkably similar to Vehicroids. Plus, their whole strategy of co-linking with each other to power up kind of emulates the Vehicroid fusion monsters too. Now, as perfect as this pick is, there is a problem too. They're already used by a character in Yu-Gi-Oh's brain. Robo P? I don't know, I didn't watch much of it. But we're trying to avoid anime conflict. So if we can't use appliancers, then what's next? Well, uh, they're not as real lifey as roids or appliancers, but the deck that I went with for Cyrus is the Gizmex. They're all machines based on different Japanese animal deities, and they cover a wide range of effects, but generally they've got that anti-meta vibe, which seemed right for Cyrus. So we'll go with that. Okay, moving on to Bastion Misawa. Even though he's known for playing the Water Dragon H2O deck, his whole thing is really just having dozens of decks on hand so he can play different strategies for different opponents, so technically he could be playing like 10 different things. But if we're being honest, Bastion's just a huge nerd, and that makes his modern Yu-Gi-Oh deck kind of obvious to me. He'd play Math Mechs for sure. I can literally see him lecturing his opponents while he summons cards like Math Mech Edition or Division. Now, I will give an honorable mention to Chemic Critters since they do still follow the chemical theme that he had going on with Hydro Get On and Oxy Get On and Water Dragon. But let's face it, Chemic Critters are so obscure and undersupported by today's standards that it kind of just doesn't even really feel fair. Now, one really fun alternate idea is giving him Mayakashi or Shiranui because in the GX manga, Bastion actually used a yokai-based zombie deck, and either of those two would match. All right, now we've got Chaz Princeton. He's most known for using armed dragons and Ojama. Actually, so much so that those two otherwise unrelated archetypes have actually gotten real-world support cards that pretty much just tie them together into one deck. But we're going to give him something new. Chaz is a fun character because he starts out as something like a rival to Jaden, but then just kind of turns into comic relief. So with that in mind, I came up with two ideas. The more serious Chaz deck would be Thunder Dragons. It channels that armed dragon vibe, and we know that armed dragons eventually got thunder-based retrains in the TCG, so I figured Thunder Dragons matched them pretty well here. It's also the first of our character decks that keeps some of that fusion summoning DNA that Yu-Gi-Oh! GX was known for. Second Chaz pick, I thought, though, was maybe Prankid. Since he kind of becomes a bit more of a goofball later in the show, especially in the dub, I think this deck keeps that Ojama vibe really well. And I can 100% see Chaz arguing with his prank kid's dual spirits in the middle of a game. Now here's the fun part. Just like how Chaz's armed dragons and Ojamas eventually became a sort of cohesive strategy, the prank kid's deck can actually make use of Thunder Dragons, or at least Thunder Dragon Colossus. So there's something there. Moving on, we've got Alexis Rhodes. 
She used the Cyber Angel cards in the anime, and that alone opens up a few really fun possibilities for her modern Yu-Gi-Oh deck option. If you wanted to stick to the Ritual Sphere, you could technically just give her a Herald-based Ritual deck with cards like Diviner of the Herald, Herald of the Arc Light, and Herald of Ultimateness. The problem here, though, is that deck pretty much requires the use of Cyber Angels too. So while I could 100% see her playing it today in Yu-Gi-Oh, the goal of this video was to try to give these characters new decks. That in mind, I've got a few others. Exo Sisters seem decent. They certainly capture her aesthetic pretty well, but I just don't know if Alexis would be as into their more defensive kind of graveyard control strategy. A more fun pick was actually Tier Limit. They've got that Yu-Gi-Oh! GX fusion energy in spades, and as much as I don't like just typecasting female characters with mostly female decks, you can't tell me Alexis wouldn't probably consider these. But even still, I think I've got one better. Sky Strikers. Like, Ray literally feels like Alexis herself as a card, and masterfully rotating through the different Sky Striker Link transformations seems like something that only an Obelisk Blue student could handle. Alright, now on to Zane Truesdale. He's Jane's primary rival, at least for the earlier half of GX, and he plays both Cyber Dragons and eventually Cyber Dark. So we once again have another machine-centric duelist, though this one's got a bit more of an edge. Thankfully, I think the solution is pretty easy. I am 1000% certain Zane would be all over a Drytron deck in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Machines? Check. Dragonic design language? Check. Overwhelmingly strong and considered difficult for a less accomplished duelist to pilot? Yeah, Quadranted even has the same attack as Cyber and Dragon. I rest my case. Next, let's talk about Aster Phoenix. He's another of Jane's primary rivals. You notice he has a lot of those. So, we know Aster's claim to fame are the Destiny heroes to rival Jaden's elemental heroes. Thankfully, even though it was pretty hard to think of a good deck fit for Jaden, finding Aster's modern day Yu-Gi-Oh deck is surprisingly easy. Aster Phoenix would 1 billion percent play Vendreds the zombie ritual archetype. Thematically, it's a perfect fit. The Destiny heroes are basically anti-heroes, and Revenge Red Slayer plays a pretty similar role in his story as a sort of vigilante against the Vendred monsters for what they did to his family. It also kind of reminds me of how Aster himself wants to avenge his own father. Okay, next Jaden friend slash rival, Jesse Anderson. Now, he's actually a little bit harder. It's tough to imagine anything even coming close to Jesse's bond that he has with his Crystal Beast. They're literally all his dual spirits, and they even got voice acting in the anime, so I don't think we'll ever have a perfect match. But in the meantime, let's try. The first thought was Gym Knights, just based on the conceptual similarity to Crystal Beast. The trouble is, Gym Knights really don't actually have that much personality to them, and, more importantly, they're already taken by Julia Crystal from Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. So, what next? Well, I thought about Crystrons, since they literally sound almost like Crystal Beasts, but, I don't know. They don't really have very much personality, and the playstyle is a turbo synchro strategy, which I'm just not really sure is a very Jesse Anderson sort of thing. Another pick was Dangerous. It's a little weird, sure, but I could actually see Jesse having a close bond with the monsters and talking to them in a duel especially cards like Danger Jackalope and Tsuchinoko. They're cryptid, so it's like nobody can see them except for him. But the deck I finally settled on is Pearly. Jesse's favorite Crystal Beast was always Booby Carbuncle, and that card just looks so much like the main deck monster Pearly that, yeah. I mean, you can't tell me the whole gimmick of taking care of your pet companion and forming memories with it and eventually watching it become stronger doesn't kind of remind you a bit of Jesse's relationship with Crystal Beast. From here, most of the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX characters are kind of one-dimensional. As Alec actually put it when we were writing the video, most of these characters' decks are their personality. So these will be pretty easy, even if they're a bit predictable. Valian Crowler. He plays Ancient Gears. Specifically, he really wants to bring out Ancient Gear Golem, a beefy boss monster that shuts down the opponent's defenses. Okay, easy enough he gets Infinitrack. They keep the Earth Machine design with a bit more of a futuristic approach, and they're just as, if not more, of an aggressive beatdown strategy. His ace monster, Infinitrack Fortress Megaclops, what else? It's huge, it's unaffected by things, and most students would cower in front of it if they had to face it on their first day of class. Shumley, he played the Koala deck, which admittedly doesn't have much of a strategy to begin with, but we can sort of adopt Chumley's soft side for furry animals and give him a Melfi deck. They're not threatening on their own, but they do combine to nickel and dime the opponent to death. And Melfi Wally is even still a marsupial, so it's sort of a callback to the koala deck. Yeah, there's that. Axel Brody. 
He played Volcanics, so I really wanted to give him another fire deck, but I actually think that the perfect fit here is Magical Musketeers. Like seriously, think about it. Axel's like literally a war-hardened mercenary and his dual disc is a retractable gun. It helps that the Volcanics are still very fiendish in their appearance and the Magical Musketeer monsters are straight up fiend types. Jim Crocodile Cook. In the anime, he uses a fossil deck and he's a paleontologist and a geologist, so I actually have two decks for him. First up, he could just use Ad Emancipators. They're cave spelunkers, so I imagine he could probably relate. It's an easy one. But a less popular pick might even be Paleozoics. I think I'll leave it up to you guys to decide which one you think suits him more. Tyranno Hassleberry. He plays dinosaurs. So it'd be pretty easy to just hand him an upgraded dino deck, the old eating over raptor, and ultimate conductor Tyranno, and call it a day. But I actually think a deck that really fits his theme of evolution even more would be Evolves. They go from evil tiles to evil sores to evil czars, which feels like a sort of spiritual successor to the whole evolution bill of cards. They even have sort of the same name. Blair Flanagan. She's cute, and she's got a Maiden in Love deck that's all about taking her opponent's monsters and using them against them. I'm not exactly sure what deck matches that style while still keeping her personality in mind, but I think the deck that she's most suited to thematically would probably be something like maybe Medulce. Or a more off-the-wall pick is Dreaming Nemlaria. It sort of has that underestimate her at your peril playstyle and vibe to it, so I'm actually feeling that more. Adrian Gecko. He plays Claudians. I'm not going to think too hard on this one because it doesn't really feel like his deck and his personality are super closely related, so we're giving him the pretty obvious pick of Weather Painters. Clouds, weather, close enough. Thelonious Viper. Well, his name is pretty much his deck. He's a one-note villain, and he uses Venom. That makes his modern-day deck a pretty straightforward one. Viper gets Ogdotix. I will say, though, I considered Reptilians, but those are already taken by Misty Treadwell from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Sartorius. His whole thing is mind control, and his Arcana Force deck is basically supposed to be doing tarot card reading. There's not really a great modern substitute for that that really involves, like, coin flips and luck. But the Gradle monsters at least feel like a decent middle ground since they've got the ability to take opponent's monsters, and that kind of reminds me of brainwashing. I'm not really sure here. You guys can leave suggestions in the comments. Professor Banner. Huh? Well, he used the Macro Cosmos and Helio cards in the anime, so maybe today he would just play Grinmaju. But I think a more fun option would actually be tapping into his sort of Egyptian fascination and giving him the modern day Horus deck you know, with Msedi and friends, and his boss monster being Horus, the Black Flame Deity. Yubel. Uh, well, Yubel kind of just takes on the deck of the person that it's possessing, so this one's kind of tough. I want to be perfectly clear here and acknowledge that Yubel has recently gotten TCG support that is literally the character that it's about, so that's kind of a really obvious pick. But I guess we'll deviate slightly and just give them Unchained? I mean, they're fiends, and they benefit from destruction, so... Yeah, sure, Unchained. Night Shroud. He's the big bad, and his deck in the anime was literally just sort of a darkness deck. So, I think for modern Yu-Gi-Oh, he's getting the Lair of Darkness strategy, complete with the Lilith Lady monsters and Darkest Diablos Lord of the Lair. Lair of Darkness lets him tribute his opponent's monsters, and that's just a strategy that makes perfect sense for a final boss. So yeah, those are the decks that I think Yu-Gi-Oh! GX characters would use in the modern day Yu-Gi-Oh! game today. However, you guys can let me know what you think by leaving down below in the comments what other decks I might have missed or what would have been a better fit for these characters. Make sure you check out my first video where I gave Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters characters new decks as well, and I'll see you in the next one. Fast turn.